I love the title of this article because we've heard we've heard this uh, before. We've heard this uh, many times before, not many times, but we've heard it before. Where it's like uh, you know, the, when it comes to Marvel Studios, the deadlines for all that stuff, the deadlines for the fact that it's like, oh shit, you know, um, we got to get these VFX shots finished before this time, before that time. So they, you know, the the deadlines are absolutely ridiculous. The deadlines are absolutely ridiculous. Well, when it comes to uh, Ant-Man and Quantumania, apparently that that all happened, you know, similar thing happened when it came to the VFX houses when it came to that. And here's the article right here. Honestly, I equate it to human greed. Ouch. So uh, on President, President's Day weekend, talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp came out, arguably more shocking was uh, blah, 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 blah. Just kind of talked about it, talked about it. Although many reviews fault Quantumania for omitting the low-key breeziness and distinguished the first two Ant-Man uh, installments, critics hauled out their heaviest brick bats to uh, lay into the movie's CGI and visual effects. The UK's Observer uh, said his uh, incoherent effects dump of a movie. Oof. Yeah, it turns out critics aren't the only ones who feel that the computer generated imagery on Quantum Mania could have used a bit more fine tuning. Some of the very VFX technicians and artists who created those sequences, who spoke with Vulture on condition of, uh, you know, obviously, hey, you know, we're going to talk about this, agree that the film's CGI quality control measures were subpar. Two of the three people we interviewed admitted that shortcuts were taken and said critical resources were diverted away to Black Panther Wakanda forever. What? They're like, nobody cares about Ant-Man. We're going to go over here. Everybody cares about Black Panther Wakanda forever because, well, the first Black Panther suffered, of course, really, really shoddy uh, CGI when it came to that final act and that 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 fight between uh, Killamonger and Black Panther. Like previous criticism leveled at Marvel by effects techs tired of being pixel fucked. There is something right there. There's a new term, pixel fucked. And pursuing uh, unionization, these workers say that the project was severely understaffed while facing an unrealistically short deadline to hit Ant-Man's long established President's Day bow. The upshot, a grueling slog during which filmmakers and studios executives nitpicked and revised vast swaths of quantum mania without budgeting enough time to implement the changes forcing VFX workers to toil as many as 80 hours per week for months. This was like a second wave of what happened with James Cameron on Titanic where the co compositors were basically taking naps under their desks because there wasn't enough time between shifts to go back home then come back, one of the techs said. Now, the entirety of the industry that has uh, or the entirety of the industry has been touched by Marvel is permanently seared, and that's what's causing the most burnout. Burnout! Wow, even threw James Cameron under the bus <laughs> when it came to Titanic. And then they took some people away. They're like, hey, we got to work on Black Panther. Sorry, sorry, guys. It's like, all right, I, I mean, I get, yeah. Black Panther, though, the VFX, I will say, were not that bad. There's many, you know, mo mainly it was pretty good. Mainly it was pretty good. But yeah, when it came to Quantumania, though, when it came to Quantumania, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, sometimes you're just looking at some things and it's like some shots look, most of the, I would say most of the shots look, look fine. Some of them look really gorgeous. But yeah, sometimes it was just like, eh, yeah, that's not looking too good. That's not looking too good. 